Suck, Chooms. How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Sorry uploads have slowed down a bit as of recently. It is crunch season and I've got to pay the bills, so I'm just taking care of some real life projects before getting back into full-time hair loss witchery. But that doesn't mean I can't spare a little time now to talk about some preem new data in our battle against the slaphead curse. You see, not too long ago, you Chooms may remember that I did a whole video series on Brian Johnson. You know, the eccentric almost billionaire who's devoting his entire life to achieving immortality. Yes, his goal is really to live forever, and he's either going to succeed at doing that or he's going to die trying. Anyways, Brian released a video on his stack for fighting hair loss, which contains some good things like topical minoxidil and topical finasteride, but it also had a lot of unproven junk mixed in it as well. I'll go ahead and link the videos where I reviewed his hair growth stack below, but at the very end of Brian's video, he mentioned that he had just started using exosome therapy and that he would like to report back on the results at a later date. In my review of his hair growth stack, I didn't go over exosome therapy because I wanted to concentrate on what he was using at the time he shot the video. However, some of my viewers have asked for a video on exosomes specifically, since after all, if Brian Johnson is starting to use exosomes, then there must be some science behind using them for hair loss, right? Well. Fortunately, not too long ago, I came across this article here. It is an up-to-date review article containing all the research on using exosomes for hair growth. Since it is a very recent article, it was behind a massive paywall, but no worries, Chooms. I contacted the publishers personally, and I told them about my background as a hair loss witcher, and they decided that my work here is far too important and valuable, so thus they gave it to me for free after a little persuasion with the axi sign. So, first of all, what are exosomes? Technically, an exosome is a form of extracellular vesicle. Extracellular vesicles are usually abbreviated as EVs, but don't confuse them with a real EV, like a Kia EV6GT. Extracellular vesicles are tiny balls of lipids that are secreted by cells. Exosomes are a specific kind of extracellular vesicle. They are created inside the cells and then are secreted outside of the cells. They are not simple little balls of lipids. They contain proteins, DNA, RNA, and even and hormones. These secreted exosomes are then taken in by other neighboring cells. So maybe you have figured out from this exactly what the purpose of exosomes is. Exosomes pass messages between cells, so you can kind of think of them like the postal service for your cells. For example, if a dormant dermal papilla cell in a hair follicle receives a message that it should start growing and dividing, it will then pass that message on to other neighboring cells by sending off exosomes. That way, nearby cells can coordinate their activities. So, exosomes are not some new phenomenon. They have been known about for about a half a century. They're actually being used right now as a sneaky way to deliver drugs directly into the cells. You see, it is possible to stick drugs inside exosomes. Cells will then consume the exosomes, and then the drugs can enter into the cells directly. So, Exosomes are a way to fool cells to consume drugs that otherwise would not be able to pass through the barrier of the outer cell membrane. But there is another use for exosomes. Like I said, exosomes are used for cells to communicate with each other. If we take exosomes from growing hair follicle cells, they will be full of growth factors and signaling proteins that will stimulate hair growth. If we collect these exosomes and then inject them in areas where hair isn't growing very well, theoretically, these exosomes would then stimulate hair growth. Exosomes are easily obtainable and easily stored since they are technically not alive. So obtaining exosomes is easier than growing hair stem cells and also much easier than transplanting individual hair follicles. With exosomes, you're only injecting just what the hair follicles need in order to stimulate hair growth. So the science is definitely interesting, no doubt about that. But is this the practical solution to grow new hair that we've all been waiting for? Well, the good news, Chums, is that exosome therapy does in fact look very promising. The bad news, though, is that there is very little human research on exosomes. Most of the research is based on animal studies. But first of all, like I said before, exosomes are very easy to produce and to store long term. To start off with, some kind of stem cell needs to be cultured. For treating hair loss, this would be dermal papilla cells, which are basically a form of stem cell that regulate the development of the hair follicles. After the cells are cultured, there are several ways to separate out the exosomes. But usually what happens is the cells are put into a centrifuge and then spun very rapidly to separate the heavier 
cells from the much lighter exosomes. The exosomes can then be stored for long periods of time. If you analyze these exosomes, they contain all sorts of goodies that stimulate hair growth. For example, the exosomes contain components of the WNT Wnt signaling pathway. They also have another pathway called the BMP pathway, as well as the Sonic Hedgehog pathway, or SHH pathway, which I should remind you, Chooms, is actually the real name of this pathway, which shows that hair loss researchers have a good sense of humor. Speaking of which, what is your favorite Sonic the Hedgehog game? Mine was Sonic CD on the Sega CD, although most of you kids are probably too young to remember that one. Anyways, getting back on point, all these pathways are very important for signaling the engine growth phase of the hair cycle and causing hair growth. In fact, the hair growth cycle is directly regulated by these pathways. We know from animal studies that high levels of the trash hormone DHT downregulate the wind pathway, and this is probably the most important downstream effect of DHT that inhibits hair growth in people who have androgenic alopecia. Injecting exosomes could very well stimulate the wind pathway and the sonic hedgehog pathway and thus counteract the effects of DHT. So exosomes look like they could work not by inhibiting DHT directly, but rather by targeting the downstream effects of DHT. So, mechanistically speaking, exosomes sound like they should work very well. As I mentioned though, there isn't much human data on using exosomes, but we do have some animal data, so let's go ahead and cover that. First of all, there have been rat and mouse studies where dermal papilla cells have been injected directly into the skin and new hair follicles actually were formed. However, only very fresh dermal papilla cells can actually do this. Dermal papilla cells lose this ability rapidly, so this isn't a practical way to grow new hair. But like I said, you probably don't need to inject complete dermal papilla cells. Just injecting their exosomes may be good enough to cause hair growth. Early studies on exosomes show that injection of exosomes causes increases in the wind pathway and the sonic hedgehog pathway. Other rodent studies then show that the injection of exosomes from dermal papilla cells increased the number and sizes of hair follicles in mice, as well as accelerated the onset of the angin growth phase and delayed the cadgen phase, which occurs at the end of the angin growth phase before the telogen resting phase can begin. It's not even necessary to use exosomes from dermal papilla cells in order to get a hair growth stimulating effect. Exosomes from bone marrow stem cells also cause growth of dermal papilla cells and increase the number of hairs in the angin growth phase. They also increase growth factors like VEGF and IGF-1. This is very important because bone marrow stem cells may be easier to obtain than dermal papilla cells, but even exosomes obtained from human skin cells have been show to promote hair growth. These type of exosomes are even easier to obtain than exosomes from the bone marrow or from dermal papilla cells. So like I said, all this basic research sounds like very good news, but the human evidence on using exosomes for hair growth is still very limited. As the authors of the review article point out, quote, Another limitation is that cellular and animal experiments are not fully representative of the human level and the mechanisms of hair growth and regeneration in humans may be much more complex." Unquote. Okay, well that's not ideal obviously, but do we have any actual human data to work with at all? Well, as it turns out, there is one human study on using exosomes for hair growth, specifically this one right here. This was a small study of 39 men with antritic alopecia lasting for 12 weeks. Exosomes derived from dermal papillary cells were applied once per week using a derma roller. There was a significant increase in hair density and hair thickness compared to before treatment, as you can see here. However, the study lacked a control group, so it is difficult to assess the actual improvement compared to what would have happened with just using microneedling alone. Of course, there's not really any good evidence that microneedling alone improves hair growth to begin with, and I went over all that in several videos that I'll link below. But even if microneedling by itself is completely useless, which it probably is, in order for us to have a valid study on exercise, exosomes, it is still necessary to have a control group, especially if you are applying the exosomes using a microneedling device. So I don't think we have any good human data supporting the use of exosomes for hair growth, at least not yet. But despite all this, exosomes do look like promising treatments. The authors of the review article concluded, quote, exosomes have been widely studied owing to their long shelf life, simple storage conditions, long intracellular communication distances, and low risk of immune responses, making them superior to direct cell therapy, unquote. So so based on this data, I can understand completely why Brian Johnson is interested in trying out exosome treatments. As an almost billionaire himself,
himself, he has access to resources that most of us mere mortals can only dream of. Even though exosomes haven't been proven to work in humans for growing hair just yet, I see that they are for sale online, though I have no idea how much they actually cost. Personally, I'd like to see some more human research before I pay money for this kind of treatment, but if you are Brian Johnson, money is obviously of no object, and it does appear this kind of treatment would have a low risk at least. So, do I think this treatment will eventually be proven effective? Yes. But will it be as good as finasteride? No. I don't think any treatment that targets the downstream effects of DHT will be as effective as just eliminating the DHT altogether, but I do think exosomes have potential as an effective adjunctive therapy to be used alongside existing clinically proven treatments like finasteride and minoxidil. And who knows, maybe it is possible that it will be effective enough to work as a monotherapy in people who start treatment early enough. We'll just have to wait and see. But nevertheless, I am glad that Brian Johnson is bringing attention to exosomes because at the very least, it is a treatment that deserves to be researched more thoroughly. So, I'm hoping to get back to the video grind soon enough, but regardless, I won't leave you hair loss witchers hanging for very long. I promise. Thank you all for watching. God bless.